OK. So the next talk in this session would be me. And I'm going to talk to you about something quite different, seemingly at the beginning, than what Ming does. And this also isn't going to feel like bioinformatics, but really is. So Ming is, as I said, one of Canada's distinguished scientists in this field. I'm not, but I'm me. And so I'm going to tell you, instead of about chain letters, about rap music. Um, you might not expect that necessarily, but that's what we'll do. So I don't normally do this. Ming and I both work at this boundary between computer science on the one hand and biology on the other hand, which raises the obvious question of why you'd study something like rap music lyrics. And the reason why I'm going to do this is actually kind of inspired by Ming's work here. Ming, did, Ming studied chain letters as a way of understanding how patterns evolve. I'm studying rap music lyrics as a way of looking for interesting kinds of patterns that arise from people thinking them up rather than from the natural processes that make life happen. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So the pattern, and, and the argument is going to be that the patterns that we look for in DNA look very much like some patterns that we often look for in rap music. Now, um, a lot of people in computer science actually study similarity between music. That's been a field for about 20 years. And usually what you do in that is you say, here's a recording of a song, and here's a recording of another song. Are those the same song? So you could imagine you've got, say, 50 different recordings of Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah. You know, there's the version by Katie Lang. There's the version by Leonard Cohen. There's the version that was in Shrek. There are dozens more. Yeah, I actually don't like that one nearly as much as Katie Lang, but it's OK. Um, and you might want to say, are those, categorize those as, oh, these are the ones that are being done by women versus men, or somehow know that they're all the same song. That's really hard for me, because in order to do that kind of work, you have to be good at a kind of math I'm lousy at. The kind of math that I'm really good at is the math that studies looking for similarities in patterns of symbols, like the ones that Ming was just showing you in the chain letters. And so if we want to look for patterns that have to do with symbolic information, which is the traditional thing that computer scientists really like studying, a good place to look is the lyrics of a song. Now, this gets a little bit unfortunate because the lyrics of pop songs, as you may notice, I know you're the right age to actually like them, and I realize that, but the, the lyrics for pop songs these days kind of suck. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if you're going to start off with, you might want to study something that's actually interesting. And actually, one genre of music that's interesting is, well, actually, maybe not one that you'd think of. So, so let's just say the kinds of things that we do with, with, with song patterns. Uh, lyrics represent sounds. Remember, the reason that we can map between words on a page and the things that are coming out of my mouth is because words on a page are made up of letters that represent phonemes. And those phonemes are things like t and f and oo. They're the individual sound elements that make up words. And if you think about the patterns of sound that, that are found in lyrics, they have to do with the words, the phonemes, the phonemic content, and also a lot of things like rhyme and alliteration, and also the way that the words are stressed. So let's think about the kinds of music we might care about where we would worry about the rhymes and the patterns of the words. And so I'm going to start off with something that you probably have never heard and mostly like, most likely won't like, although I will ask, how many of you like Glee? OK. So I don't, but everyone always thinks that I should. Um, all right, so why is this lovely? And I will note that I think this is actually a beautiful little song. Um, this is a song from a show tune. It's a song from a Broadway show. Those of you who go to see plays in Toronto, like The Lion King or you know, Mamma Mia or whatever, same genre. Or those of you who are now watching Glee in huge numbers, same genre. Uh, these are songs that were mostly written in the, in the 1925 to 1960 range in the US. This is a song that tells a story, and that's why it might be interesting to look just at the words. It tells a story. This is actually about a man who is not allowed to see his fiance on the day that they're getting married. And you can tell he's so overwhelmed with love for his fiance, he can't manage to say a word with more than one syllable in that entire stanza except darlin' and away. Otherwise, he's, he's so overwhelmed, he's just stuck with all these one-syllable words. He's that sort of numb. Now, I'm studying these right now, but the work that I did with my, with my former student, Hussein Hirji, is instead about rap music. 
which is probably a music that more of you listen to, although it is getting funny how many kids your age are listening to show tunes because of Glee. It's amazing how much the culture can change. <coughs> so why study rap music lyrics? Well, basically because they're the only interesting part of the genre of music. And what do I mean by that? What I really mean by that is the music isn't, the, the melodies aren't very interesting. They're usually looped. They're often sampled. There's some creativity that does come up when somebody figures out which loops would go well together, which samples would be a clever one to use. But the real creativity in rap entirely lives in the lyrics and the way that they rhyme and, and, and in the rhythm of them. And in fact, rappers characterize themselves. They say, they, they, they represent themselves on the basis of how good their rhyming is. So that's the thing that, that's a good argument for saying these are, these are smart things for us to look at rather than trying to listen to like those recordings of Hallelujah. Here we want to look at the words. So, all right, a quick confession. I should say I don't listen to hip hop. Um, my student who I did this work with is a lot cooler than me. Uh, he graduated from Waterloo a few months ago and now is living in an apartment in downtown Toronto and going to work in a restaurant and is playing in his band these days. I, on the other hand, am a university professor. So he's a lot cooler than me and he actually listens to this music. I don't listen to this music, I listen to show tunes. Um, but they're both kind of similar in one sense. They both tell stories and they're both quite complicated in their words. So the questions that we decided to ask when we were thinking about studying rap music as computer scientists were, is there something interesting about rap music that uh, lets us find the rhymes in it? Is rap music rhymed differently than rock music or other lyrics? And then can we characterize individual, act, uh, individual performers on the basis of the way that they rhyme? Now you might think this is easy. That's awesome. Mm. I'm really bad with computers, I'm sorry. Uh, 1979, Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Gang. This is one of the earliest rap songs ever. You hear that awesome disco beat in the background? Love that. Um, on the other hand, if you think about finding rhymes in this, it ain't real hard because, oh, this got, this got mis, mislined up, but it's just toes to lows and feet to seat. No hard, not, not hard at all. Whereas, you might think it's a little harder in other cases. That's a song that convinced me this was actually a project worth doing. So this is Eminem. The song came out in 2001 when I guess most of you were about nine or so or eight or so. Uh, came out right after the 9-11 attacks. It's a duet with him, between him and Jay-Z, but the, the verse I just played for you is one of his verses. Let's think about rhymes in this. So, all right, we want to rhyme last syllables of lines. So lyrics and hysterics, merit and hear it, spirit, but that doesn't quite work, right? Because if you look at the things that we're rhyming up there, merits and hear it, they don't actually end with the same consonant. And lyrics and hysterics, those are different vowels, e, e, or spirit and cherish, e, e, again. So quite, not quite the same. It goes a little bit longer too. They're, they're not just one, one syllable rhymes, they're, they're what we call extended rhymes or mosaic rhymes. They extend across multiple syllables. It's even a little bit more complicated than that, and they're long, too. Lucrative lyrics, youth and hysterics, views and his merits. There's, there are five or six syllables in some cases. And then it's even more complicated. They, they even start moving on to being rhymes that deal with the end of one line matching the beginning of the next line, where it's uh, lucrative lyrics matching who could inherit at the beginning of the next line, or views and his merits, huge interference. The end of one line matches the middle of the next line, or the end of one line matches the beginning of the next line. And then you wind up, there's a computer science phenomenon that says that if A matches B, actually it's a math phenomenon called transitivity, that if A matches B and B matches C, then A matches C. So you wind up with some real complexity in, in the, the way that these things line up there as well. And then on top of that, you've got these other internal rhymes. Who's the king of these rude, ludicrous, lucrative lyrics? Ooh, 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 ooh. That's clearly something that the artist, that Eminem, when he did the lyrics design here, had in mind. There's a lot of creativity that goes into this. And it just keeps getting more and more and more complicated. There's these more transitivity. It's just unbelievable mess. So Hussein showed this to me and I said, okay, maybe there's some computer science there. Maybe there's something we can actually do. 
So I want to show you a little bit about how this works and uh, tell you a little bit about how we can find these rhymes. So this is the program, no, that's the, that's, the, that's the video I just showed you. This is the program that results from that. Let's find it, there it goes. So this is a, one challenge with doing this work is finding a, a, a song that I can actually show to you and is okay for me to show to high school students. Um, this is a Beastie Boys song. Uh, and if I wanted to find the rhymes in it, you see that here it highlights them. So it says, so let's, let's find one here. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I drink it matches with I think it. Not super, not super exciting. Um, but some of the other ones, you're cool matching with your stool. Uh, takes a big, takes a sip. Uh, there's a few others that come in here. Some of these aren't especially good, too. It quite often rhymes things or uh, highlights things as being rhyming to each other that really aren't. But you, we've got a program that, as fast as I can basically click the, the go button, will label this with approximate rhymes in it. It even rhymes chivas, which is a brand of whiskey, with, with us, which is a little cute, which is probably supposed to be there. So that's the program that we, that we built. How does this work? It's really easy to find rhymes at the ends of lines of, 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 of music. That's no trouble. You just take the text, you convert it to a representation that has to do with sound, you look at the end syllables of, word, of the lines, and then you just look for vowels that match until they don't. That's fairly straightforward. Finding these internal rhymes, where the middle of one line matches the end of one the next line, or the end of one line matches the middle of the next line, that's really hard. And that's the place where it starts to be like a pattern that we use in computational biology in this field that Ming and I work on. And so I'm going to give you a tiny little tour through that. The problem is called sequence alignment. You may or may not know the DNA sequences come over a four-letter alphabet. There's four parts to every DNA sequence called adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. We abbreviate them as A, C, G, and T. So these might be two DNA sequences and evolution might have made it the case that two parts of those are surprisingly similar to each other. Say like that. Those two sequences there, which are subregions of the original ones, line up like that, where a vertical bar means the two letters are the same, an X means that uh, one letter doesn't match the other letter, and a dash means we had one, there's one letter in one sequence and it doesn't have a match in the other sequence. This is called a sequence alignment. It's the basic problem in the field that Ming and I work on. He and I have actually both worked on this problem quite a bit too. In rap music, we're trying to find basically the same kinds of patterns. Matches between sounds in one word and in another word. But the thing that's a little bit harder is we have to figure out what rhymes with what. So the first step is we start off with 28,000 lines of rap music. I didn't do the work, my student did the work. It took about, uh, five weeks to go through 28,000 lines of rap music, but he identified rhymes in those 28,000 lines of rap music at the ends. And then we uh, transcribe from the text into uh, a representation of the sounds. And then we started to think about what does it mean to be rhyming? And so that was the real work of this project. Well, if you think about what it means to be rhyming, two things rhyme if they have the same vowel or similar vowels if they have the same consonant at the end, or similar consonants, and also it has to have something to do with the, the stress patterns of the word. So if you have some, in that, in that Eminem example I showed you before, he rhymes the phrase beautiful music with food for the spirit. And he actually changes the way that you pronounce the word beautiful. It's beautiful music, ratcheting with food for the spirit, bum, 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 bum. It's the same pattern in both cases. So a rhyme is basically, well, it's an alignment of sequences. It's syllables that match up with each other, where each syllable matches well, the pattern of stress matches, the vowels match, and the ending consonants match. And so how do we figure out whether two things should or shouldn't contribute to a good rhyme? Well, what we did is we did a little bit of computer science then, which I'm not going to show you very much of. But the, under, the underlying idea is, if you ask somebody on the street, hey, does feet, match, or does feet rhyme with fate? Well, they'd say no. And unfortunately, we don't have a computer that knows that just because of the cultural cues that you and I have. We have to find out from our data whether feet matches fate. So we collect this huge collection of 28,000 lines of rap music, see how often do E and A 
appear at the end of lines that are supposed to be rhyming match to each other. If they match to each other really often, then we say, okay, according to rap lyricists, E rhymes with A. Cool. And if they don't, then they don't. And that's all we did. We do this for all of the parts of a syllable. Now, how does this turn into something that's like math? Well, about half of you have possibly seen the logarithm before, and the other half of you haven't. So I won't, I won't torment you too much with some math, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, that, it's that moment that makes you go, oh, God. It's 3.30, and he's talking about logarithms. Ugh. But it's not too bad here. The idea is if E and A are matched to each other very often in things we know rhyme, then E and A will appear pretty often in uh, the numerator of this fraction here. And if E and A appear very commonly as ordinary vowels not matched with each other, they'll pop up pretty often in the denominator. So this fraction here is how often is E matched with A in rhymes versus by chance. And if that fraction is more than one, then E matches A more often than you'd expect by chance. And so that's probably a good evidence that they do rhyme. And if it's less than one, they probably don't rhyme. We take the logarithm. The logarithm of something that's more than one is positive. The logarithm of something that's between zero and one is negative. And that gives us a score. And so we do that for every part of a syllable. And that lets us tell things like low ma lows matches with toes because O matches with O very well and Z matches with Z very well. And they're both one syllable words. And this turns into a pretty decent way of scoring matches. So I'll just quickly show you here things like the ones in green are the perfect rhymes. So Rick's rhyming, rhyming with Rick's scores 5.23, whereas the things that are negative, so look at the, the, the first one on the top line, feel doesn't actually rhyme with in. And that gets a score of minus 1.66. So we got a pretty good intuition for what rhymes with what from that. So we answered the first question, and you build an algorithm out of that, which if I had an hour and not, and not a little bit less, I would show you. But you build an algorithm for that, that that is able to identify rhymes and lyrics that way. OK, that's pretty cool. What can you do with it? Well, you can identify that rap music really does have more rhymes, which in another way of saying, is, another way of saying it is, is more interesting than rock music. Uh, rap music has about 1.8 lines uh, uh, rhymes per line, whereas uh, rock music has more like one line, per, one rhyme per line. So that's not so surprising. What's a little bit cooler is we can also identify individual performers this way, and I'll just show you a very quick demo of that. Here's this song that I showed you before. So let's try to we can analyze it, and it'll tell us how many times we see different kinds of rhymes. So for example, this one has uh, 0.7 one syllable rhymes per line and 0.016 uh, four syllable rhymes per line. OK, whatever. Now this is a Beastie Boys song, and so we're going to classify it by the rapper. And it's going to, uh, you're going to think it got it wrong, but I promise you it really didn't. So it says it's a Run DMC song. Now how does it do that? What it does is it looks at this list of features here, which I just showed you, and it says, which rapper is closest to that in my set of 25 rappers? And the answer is Run DMC. And the reason why that's actually not a failure is that in this case, the Beastie Boys were desperately trying in their first album, which this is from, to sound like Run DMC. So maybe not so bad. Now. A couple of other cool stories that we can get. So we can classify musicians this way, and it actually works really well. I should just quickly tell you, we've got uh, 25 rappers in a collection of 500 songs. With this method, we can get 53% of them right, which is pretty amazing since there's 24 wrong answers and one right answer. So it, it really is actually finding something about how the rappers perform. It also can tell us some kind of cool stories. My favorite one is this one. Uh, there's a, ba a band called the Bone Thugs in Harmony and they did a song with Notorious B.I.G. while he was still alive called Notorious Thugs. And Biggie did a verse as part of that, of the, as part of that song. The Bone Thugs have a really fast style of, of, of rapping. Biggie, not so much. It took him a really long time to figure out what he was doing. And so he took a really long time to figure out what he was going to do. And then he, he finally got through his song, or finally came down and, and, and made, it, made his verse in the song. And our verse says, yeah, actually, that's when they was trying to sound like the Bone Thugs, and he got it right. 
Another song that I really liked, another example I really liked was there's a Dr. Dre song called Still DRE, uh, which came, it was part of a comeback album of his, and he, you know, was trying to show he had, he still had it, he was still with it, and so he hired Jay-Z to write one of his songs, which kind of seems lame to me, and our program catches it and calls it a, and calls it a Jay-Z song, which is right. And there's a few other examples of songs like that where you can dig out the fact that they were actually written by, by, by somebody and it ain't the guy who was performing it. My other, but absolutely my favorite example of all of these, this is change in style of rhyme over time. This is all of the albums in our collection and you see the lower left hand corner, so this is from 1980 to 2010, the dots show how many times a, per a particular performer uses one syllable rhymes, which you could say were kind of short simple rhymes. And you see clearly that the style is changing over time. So again, I don't think pop music is super interesting in terms of its lyrics these days, but rap music is actually getting more interesting. It's getting more complicated as time goes by, because you can see that that's the fraction of one syllable, syllable rhymes is clearly going down over time. So that's the end of my talk. I want to just leave you with a couple of messages. One is, give, for those of you who don't like rap music, give it a little credit. You may not want to listen to it, but it's got some amazing style inside of it. It's very creative. Um, the patterns that we can I identify as existing in rap music, according to musicians, they really exist. They're really in the music. We can find them with computer algorithms, and we can do a pretty good job. And we can actually characterize artists surprisingly well by the way that they characterize, uh, by the way that they rhyme, according to our program. So thanks very much. If you're interested in this project, if you do a, a Google search for Rhyme Analyzer, you'll find this, and you can download it and play with it, which is kind of fun. Thanks very much.